New Life Christian Church here in Warrnambool. The faithful workers of New Life here on site. And New Life Christian Church online and those who are worshiping with us tonight. It is a privilege to worship together as a family. And we are not bound by walls. And there is one spirit and life in us, and that is the Spirit of God. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you that it is your spirit that unites all of us. We bless your holy, holy name. And we thank you for everything that you have done. Well 
Father, it is your amazing grace that we sing about as we think of all the things that you have done for us. Father, we thank you that in Jesus you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. That you have accepted us and drawn us into your family. You've taken up residence within us by your Spirit. You've raised us up and you have seated us together with Christ in the heavenlies. And any barrier that might have been there in the past has been broken down. And the disappointments of life, you're able to just bring peace and comfort into those places. So we thank you, Father, tonight for all the things you have done for us. We love you and we thank you yes. in Jesus' name. Love you, Lord.
escape your love nothing can separate anyone from your love you love everyone you love even those who don't know you yet and you died for those people who don't know you yet and we thank you for this great love that was willing to go through everything and you've given everything back and you're just saying come home come back to me so we surrender to you Lord Jesus right now we surrender to your love and we thank you that this is such a great love that is hard to understand we thank you that you have also given us your spirit now we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear your voice thank you Lord thank you for looking after us
darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came round, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, till a virgin came the word, from the throne of endless glory, to the cradle in the dark. the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for us thank you the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings.
Father, you're the one that seeks us out. You're the one that comes to us and reveals himself to us. Father, we, are the, we, we run from you. We're afraid of you, Father. When we look at ourselves and we look at your holiness, Father, but you're the one that says, I've done it all at the cross. Come home, my child. You're the one that seeks us out wherever we might be to bring us home and bring us back into that relationship. You're the one that, that is with us constantly every moment of every day, longing to, for that relationship, longing for that communion with, with every person, Father. You're the one that came to us. You're the one that seeks us out. You're the one that sees great value in every person. You're the one that sees people so much more than, than we see ourselves, Father. And we love you and we adore you and we thank you, Father, that you didn't give up on us, but instead you were determined to seek us out and bring us home. Before the beginning of time, you, 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 pre, you planned this and, and knew this was, would come about. But you also knew that you would go to the cross to bring us home. And we thank you for that. Father, open the eyes of our understanding that we might see the value that we are, that, that we are a new creation. We are created in your image, Father. Sin has, has done so much damage and it has destroyed us so badly and taken us to a place of where, where, where we have no value really in our own minds, Father. But that's not who we were, we were created to be. That's not who we are, Father. And I just pray that you open the eyes of our understanding that we might see your glory and your beauty but also see who we are because you valued us so much. Thank you. Father, you say not to be anxious about anything, but to bring all our cares to you in prayer. That's how we face issues in our life, Father. And that's how we fight our battles. We come to you. Free. There is 
the cross to face the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the water Holding back the sea Should I ever need reminding The greater holds the body. Now that power is in me. There is another in the fire. Surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I
one back you were saying to us that something bad happened when we before we were born and the reality that we see right now is not the true reality there is a bigger thing above this and that is why you sent your son to save us and we thank you story that you that was mentioned in the scripture about the lost son when all you are saying is I will not force you to love me and I will let you do as you want but I want you to know then you when find out that life out there without me will hurt you break you do not be afraid to come back to me and that is all I want I don't care what you have done just come back home and we thank you Lord for this unconditional love that doesn't measure what we have done but you look into our hearts and we thank you for seeing through us
you know, Paul's biggest, um, or one of his biggest struggles, seemed in the Gospels, seemed to be constantly bringing people back to, to resting in their trust for what God had done and not their own personal abilities or struggles. And, and I just want to read from Galatians 3. He said, You crazy Galatians. Did someone put a hex on you? It's in the message version, guys. Have you taken leave of your senses? Something crazy has happened, for it is obvious that you no longer have the crucified Jesus in clear focus in your lives. His sacrifice on the cross was certainly set before you clearly enough. Let me put this question to you. How did your new life begin? Was it by working your heads off to please God? Or was it by responding to God's message to you? Are you going to continue this craziness? For only crazy people would think they could complete by their own efforts what was begun by God. If you weren't smart enough or strong enough to begin it, how do you suppose you could perfect it? Did you go through this whole painful learning process for nothing? Is it not yet a total loss? But certainly will be if you keep this up. Answer this question. Does the God who lavishly provides you with his own presence, his Holy Spirit, working things in your lives you could never do for yourself, does he do these things because of your strenuous moral striving or because you trust him to do them in you? Don't these things happen among you just as they happened with Abraham? He believed God and that act of belief was turned into a life that was right with God. Is it not obvious to you that persons who put their trust in Jesus, not persons who put their trust in the law, are like Abraham, children of faith? It was all laid out beforehand in Scripture that God would set things right with non-Jews by faith. Scripture anticipated this in the promises to Abraham, all nations will be blessed by you. So those who now live by faith are blessed along with Abraham, who lived by faith. This is not new doctrine, and that means that anyone who tries to live by his own effort, independent of God, is doomed to failure. Scripture backs this up. Utterly cursed is every person who fails to carry out every detail written in the book of the law. The obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program should make it plain that no one can sustain a relationship with God that way. The person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God does for you. Habakkuk had it right. The person who believes God is set right by God, and that's the real life. Rule keeping does not naturally evolve into living by faith, but only perpetuates itself in more and more rule keeping. A fact observed in scripture, the one who does these things, rule keeping, continues to live by them. You crazy Galatians, did someone put a hex on you? You know, it's been really made obvious to me this last few days that knowing you have the truth is experiencing it, it's outworking in your life. Now God made a promise and he said that he would cause us to walk in his ways. And cause means a person that gives rise to an action. Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. And the outworking of the truth is the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. Brothers and sisters, we know we are resting in the truth when this fruit is a part of our lives. And what I've discovered through my life is when I put my full trust in Jesus and and the cross, and when I put my full trust in God, that he will finish what he started, that he will that he will cause me to walk in his ways. And when I give up trying to be what I think I should be or who I should be, then I find that that fruit naturally comes. And that relationship grows and matures 
and, and I find then that there is the love, there is the joy, there is the peace. And it's not something from a bunch of rules, but, it, but it's from a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And he brought us into that relationship at the cross. He sought us out. He, he loves us so much and because he created us. He values us so much than we even value ourselves. So as we come around communion tonight and as we eat this biscuit, let's just be reminded that his broken body was for us and that to bring us home and bring us back into that relationship. Let's eat, guys. And as we drink, let's be reminded that his blood was shed for us. That we, the relationship could be fully restored. That we could come to a holy God and with no shame or guilt or fear, knowing that he fully accepts us because we are in, his, in the beloved, it says. Let's drink together, guys. Father, you sought us out and you brought us home. Father, you are with us always. Your Holy Spirit lives in each and every one of us, leading us and guiding us. And we just love you so much and we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you, Father, for the security we have in you, Father, the security we have in your promises, Father, and the security we have in this relationship that will go on for all eternity. As, we, as you reveal more of yourself to us. Amen.
right here with us now, Father. And Father, we just want to lift up Tiffany and Jose, Diego and the rest of the family to you right now. Father, you, uh, your name is loving kindness. And Father, we know that you are with this family right now. And Father, we just know and pray that they will know and sense your presence in the middle of this insanity, Father. And in the middle of our pain and in the middle of our fear, Father, you are with us, Father. And we claim that right now, that they will know and see and experience your presence, Father, your love and your gentleness and your peace. Father, we lift them up to you right now, Father, for you are a God who heals. At the cross, you not only healed us and brought us back, but you healed our physical ailments as well, Father, and we claim that for this family now as well, Father. But, Father, ultimately we claim the relationship that we have with you, Father, that they will know that relationship, that they will know that a loving, caring, almighty God and Father is with them now that they will know that that you uh, have them in your hands, that you embrace and that you are with them in this time, Father. For, Father, you love us all so much and you are with us in every situation wherever we find ourselves, Father. And, Father, we just lift this family up to you now and we acknowledge that you are with them and we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, that you are with us in our grief. You are with us in these times, Father. And you are a comforter. You are like that smooth, sooth, soothing ointment that just soothes us, Father. Your love is so beautiful and so gentle. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, as we go out into this week, Father, let us be about, make ourselves available to you that, that we can love those around us, that we can shine around with those people around us, that they might see you in us, Father. For this world needs to know you more, Father. This world needs to know of your goodness and your holiness and your, and your mighty love, Father. And who else? But we are here there for you, Father, that they might see that, Father. And we thank you. Go! 